Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living, ever-growing boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even further beyond the 1K ladder. We are so close to 1,100 subscribers, I can almost taste it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're sitting at 1,066 subscribers. We've been cranking it up a bit. I don't know what it is. My channel tends to ebb and flow in the subscriber growing department. So we've gone from like 1,053 all the way up to 1066 like i don't know someone gave me a shout out or the algorithm's just finally working in my favor again <laughs> um but either way i really do appreciate all of the support so cyberstorm access has been getting a lot of card reveals lately and i want to go through them because some of these cards are actually pretty good some are kind of booty booty butt cheeks but we're gonna go through them anyway because maybe there's something actually good about some of these that i'm just not seeing so starting off here we've got yukai narin no kitsunubi urara do the Macarena, however the hell you pronounce this card. Uh, Fire Warrior Effect Monster, level 3, 200 attack, 1900 defense. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. All face-up monsters on the field become fire. So if you're playing Fire Fist in 2023 for some reason, here you go. This uh, this seems pretty good for, for a deck like that, or maybe even like Salamangrate. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then if this card is in your graveyard and your opponent has a Fire Monster on the field or in their graveyard, you can special on this card from your hand. The only way I see this really being good is uh maybe in like salad like that's the only thing i can really think of um yeah the, the card just doesn't seem all that good to me next up we have ton ton aka the dragon ball character uh the pig is uh smashing down on a i guess a piece of wood chop chopping some wood i guess and even yg organization says hogging that's right we finna be hogging you, you gotta cut out these ads yg organization i swear to god real talk so anyway we got ton ton quick play spell you can only use second effect this card's in once per turn you can target one face up monster on the field if its current attack and defense and or level are higher than their original values, they become their respective original values, then pay life points in multiples of 100 max 1,000, which is worded really weirdly in regards to problem-solving card text. Uh, during your main phase, if your life points are equal to your opponent's and this card is in your grave, you can set this card to your field. So I guess that's kind of why you can pay the life points in multiples of 100. It's just kind of worded weirdly. Like normally Yu-Gi-Oh cards will say like, then pay life points in multiples of 100, after that, if this card is in your graveyard, you can set, I don't know, maybe it's just why your organization's translating, I, I don't know. Um, but it's interesting. I mean, I guess like if you're playing against Virtual World and their levels are different, then you can activate this, but I think that their levels are treated as the original levels when they change their levels. Um, I could be wrong. I haven't played against Virtual World in a hot minute because that deck's just kind of garbo now. Um, but I mean, it's an interesting card. I mean, any deck that wants to do level or stat modifications, that's cool. Um, I guess. I, I don't really think it's all that great, to be honest. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Next up, we got Wannabe, and we, we, we finna buzz on up in here with all these bullshit ads. <laughs> like, seriously, why'd you organization? I know I say it all the time, but you gotta fix these little pop-up ads and shit. Level 2 Light Insect Effect Monster, Zero Attack and Fence. You can only use the effect of this card's name once per turn. So during the end phase, you send this card from your hand or field to the grave. Exhibit cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of your opponent's unoccupied spell and trap zones, so basically a maximum of five. And if you do, you can set one excavated trap, but send it to the grave during the next end phase. Also place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. Um, it's interesting, I guess. I don't really know what you played in. I don't really think you really want to play this in Elder Lich. That just seems kind of bad. Uh, next up here, we actually have something that's good. We got Pendulum Moon, and why Joe makes the... Uh, Good point of where is Pendulum Sun? So I, I'm expecting Pendulum Moon or Pendulum Sun to be out soon. So this is a level one light spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster, 200 attack, 700 defense, and a Pendulum Scale of zero, which is pretty good. Pendulum Effect, you can only use the Pendulum Effect of this card's name once per turn. During your main phase, you can add one face up Pendulum Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand and destroy this card. So like Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, something like that. Monster Effect, you can only use the Monster Effect of this card's name once per turn. If you have two cards in your Pendulum Zone, you can add up to up to two face-up pendulum monsters from your extra deck to your hand each with a level between exclusive okay the pendulum scales of the cards in your pendulum zone also for the rest of this turn unless you pendulum summon after this effect resolves you cannot activate monster effects and the effects of any cards in your pendulum zones are negated this card is disgusting uh being able to recur two face-up pendulum monsters from the extra deck to your hand um but what i'm getting from the exclusive part is basically a level between exclusive the pendulum scales of the cards in your zones. So like if you have, you know, pendulum moon at zero and like infinite gates uh, zero or whatever, whatever the 13 scale is, then you can get anything in between those levels. This card seems disgustingly good for pendulum decks. Like, 
you don't even, I feel like you don't even need electromite anymore at this point. And I know that may sound sacrilege, but like for one thing, electromite is just too busted, but pendulum moon, I think is just, it's, it's really good. I think because of this card and also beyond the pendulum, I don't think electromite's ever going to get unbanned. Next up here is uh, <laughs> Ringworm, the 100 Apple Dragon. I might as well just called it the 100 Sword Soul Dragon because this thing is really good Sword Soul support. Uh, so let's see. An Apple a Day summons a Ringworm. Ain't that the truth? Uh, so it's a level 2 Light Dragon Tuner Effect Monster, 100 attack and 1100 defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If there's a face-up non-effect monster on the field, hey, uh, Monk of the Tenny, you just got a match on Tinder, you could special summon this card from your hand. During the turn, you synchro summon a synchro monster. Hey, uh, Baron... Any sword, soul, synchro ever, you just got a match on Bumble. You can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon 100 Apple Dragon, Worm, hello, light level 2, attack and defense 100. If this token is used as synchro material, it can be treated as a fucking tuner. That is really good. Like, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, like, sword, soul doesn't even need Arch Nemesis Protos anymore. Like, yeah, that card's disgusting in its own right. But this Ringworm Dragon is just, it seems really good for Sword Soul. I could be wrong. I haven't really played Sword Soul all that much. Like, ever since they first came out, I playtest them a little bit to understand how they function and what they do and stuff like that. But this just seems like a Sword Soul support to the max. Like, I, I don't I don't see how else it could be. Also, I apologize if I'm stuttering. My cancer meds have me high as a kite more than usual. So I'm I'm kind of in a, in a loopy world right now. We out here in the hyperbolic time chamber trying to get some ass. <laughs> so keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so next up we got a uh, Saki Tama. The third Tama appears. It's a level four light fairy spirit effect monster. Four in attack, nine hundred defense. Cannot be special summoned. That's per usual with spirits. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. So you can reveal this card in your hand immediately after this effect resolves. Normal summon one spirit monster from your hand. Giving spirits an additional normal summon seems disgusting. Keep in mind that the uh, time rendering Morganite is also in this set. So that's just giving decks even more special uh, normal summons. Excuse me. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summon or foot face up, this turn return to the hand. That's standard. If this card is tributed, you can target a spirit monster in your, in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So I don't know if the whole tributing thing is really all that necessary. I mean, the only spirit monsters that you could really be tributing for is like Yamato Dragon, which kind of sucks. And then the Hikis, Hikitako Megami, like the level 7 or 8 spirit monster that has like 2800 attack. Um, I feel like you're still better off just playing like spirit control, but what Saki Tama can allow you to do is have that additional summon. And again, if you're playing time rendering Morganite, then you're already getting two normal summons a turn. Combine that with Saki Tama, you're getting three normal summons a turn, which in a spirit deck, I mean, that's basically just making a spirit deck into, uh, Jesus, what was that, uh, archetype called, uh, the, the Yosenjus, Yosenjus, they normal summon a bunch and then they all bounce to hand. The, it, that seems really good in concept. I don't really think that we're going to see spirits pop off in that regard, at least very consistently. But having spirit support in the game is always much appreciated. I mean, uh, it's not ever something that people are going to complain about. Spirits are really cool, especially too that Yadagarasu is back at one, which it could easily be at three. It's going to be interesting to see if anything happens. So out of all the reveals so far, what do I think is the most broken stuff out of Cyberstorm Access? Easily Pendulum Moon, that card just seems disgusting. Time Rendering Morganite, I don't care what people say, that card is absolutely bonkers dumb. Uh, and then the Chaos Angel too. The fact that Chaos Angel can treat any light or dark monster on the field as a tuner, I mean, like, that's just screaming to treat a Bi-Steel as a tuner and then Synchro into the Chaos Angel. So generic, it's not once per turn, it's absolutely disgusting. I think that Cyberstorm Access is starting to look like a really sexy set. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's looking like a big old piece of chicken nuggies. And uh, I think it's only going to uh, get better as time goes on. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about these recent uh, Cyberstorm Access reveals. Thank you again for really supporting the channel. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers where you've been. Whether you've been subscribed for five months, five minutes, or five years, I truly do appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.